first. Andy, what have you got in that magical sack of yours? Yikes, that's a loaded question. <laughs> everybody and welcome to another episode of the goddamn audio files mate my name's andy his name's john strike that reverse it when you were so in love with me i played around like i was free thought i could have my cake and eat it too but oh how i cried over losing you see me down and out but i ain't about to go on living my life without you for every day I made you cry. I'll pay you, girl, till the day I die. More on that later. But first, Andy, what have you got in that magical sack of yours? Yikes. That's a loaded question. Um, let's uh, um, well, I'll put my gloves on. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, a band called Far Caspian. Have you ever heard of them? No. Okay. Well, this track is a track called Blue, like the color. Right. But not the color of my wonderful sack. Why don't you go off and give this tune a listen? Oh. And let I'm, me not un I'm not unseeing that now, am I? <laughs> <laughs> Go Thanks wipe your hard drive. my big mouth. <laughs> yes. Go wipe your hard drive and give this tune by Far Caspian a listen. Jesus, nurse. Nurse. <laughs> <laughs> I really like those few notes at the start. There's one that went really nice. Very pretty is a short song. Let's just go back and listen to that again. <laughs> Okay, so I really like that first 10 seconds. That was really, yeah, really pretty. And then we go into a sort of um, reverb -y guitar. It's almost got like a touch of surfy sound to it. Um, really nice, jaunty, upbeat. Um, and then the vocals have just kicked in. And again, they, they've got that produced, dampened sound to the vocals, which isn't a favorite of mine um okay let's see how it goes it's always the time i've wanted this since forever but i don't know it's not the way i love i try for you to see but you'll never know
done. It's just being all emotive there for a second. Um, there's lots of things in this I really like, and a couple of bits I don't. Uh, <laughs> so I really like the picking guitar, and then the other one that's going up and down the scales is really nice. There's a nice sort of um, bouncy bass line going on as well. Um, the drums that sometimes sound almost programmed because they're really, really, really clean, but it probably is someone actually doing it. Um, so this is all very nice, and um, I just don't particularly like the sound of the vocals. Um, it's kind of slightly overproduced, there's a tiny bit of reverb on it. It's dampened down as well, so it's, it's less human sounding, and all of that distances you from actually connecting with the voice i find it's just me i guess um this kind of sounds like some of the other stuff andy's given me which is kind of 2000 teens that sort of sound um it's kind of a mixture it's got a dreamy quality to it so it's like, like this dreamy upbeat poppy with a bit of sort of surfiness to it. It's all, it's nice, I'm not gonna be wrong. Um, I like the instrumental parts of this more. The vocals are just detracting from me when he's, when he's spouting this stuff, which is a shame, but that's just my taste, I think. Nothing particularly wrong with it, I guess. You see, you gotta I just noticed listening to that, I was trying to isolate the guitars in my in my eardrums. And it kind of sounds that picking jaunty sort of guitar sounds quite eighties indie. It's like half a Johnny Marr. Um hasn't got the full Johnny Marr sound. <laughs> if that makes I don't want it to sound like it's like I'm complaining about it. I, I really like it actually. So let's just take it back a wee bit and see if we can hear that again. <laughs> Yeah, I was just trying to, I was wondering why I was quite liking this. And it was that guitar. Um, it's got some sort of muscle memory. Uh, oh yeah, that's, that's Smiths-esque almost. Mm. It's a nice song. It's pleasant enough. It's not horrible or anything. The vocals did detract from me. Uh, 
we almost stopped listening to him towards the end was just concentrating on the guitars and the music really nice um nothing wow but nice bass um rhythm section together actually again sort of that bouncy lifty quality to it yeah it's a decent song let's um find out a bit more about far caspian um let's get back to andy okay so you're back and what was your mm -hmm. what was your experience like with this number okay um yeah it was quite I think we said just on a recent episode how you pull back the song after 15 seconds, which is a record for you. I think it's about 20 seconds for me. Yeah. I absolutely adore the beginning of this track. Yeah. The first 15 seconds or so with this atmospheric sort of Pink Floyd sustained sort of sound. And then these careful notes that were planted, one of which in particular sort of bent and twisted as it hit daylight. It could have been a start to a Radiohead song. Hmm. It, it, almost in my head, I don't know why, it sounded like an apology. <laughs> it was that tone. And then, rather rudely, I thought, the piece of Dawn of the Savannah was broken by this reverber <laughs> re reverbed guitar riff and then this jaunty beat from the drummer. Hmm. The two sections of music could not be more divorced from each other in tone if they were... Richard Burton and Elizabeth Taylor, but then they got back together three times, so perhaps not them. But anyway, <laughs> um, so behind, um, and this guitar, this re reverb guitar, it sounds almost a little bit surfy in its yes. sort of tone. Um, it does sound like But much. behind that, there's an even more sort of classic jangly guitar just picking notes, but like he's following the main guitar around picking up bits of litter after him because he's dropped Chris rappers and, you know, Mars bar rappers and stuff like that on the floor. I really like this combination and it's very subtle execution as well. I mean, it's just, just there, you know, it's not in your face at all. Mm -hmm. And it just augments it lovely. And you actually just have to really listen to, to get it. Um, otherwise it's just the effect as it were washing over you. The rhythm section works really nicely here. Um, I pictured, I had a mental note, and I get these occasionally, of the drummer and the bass as being two girls, each holding the end of a rather large skipping rope, while the two guitarists are doing a bit of double dutch in the middle. Yeah. You know, they've really got a solid foundation there, and it's bouncy, and it's really, you know, they're driving it. They're really in control, even though it looks like they're just holding the rope. I liked it a lot. Then the vocals start. And unfortunately, they do have that sound to them that, isn't a favourite of mine. It's not horrible or painful, but and I think he may have a nice voice. I just don't think I'll ever know from this song. There's a slight reverb on the... And I'll expand on why I say this. So there's a slight reverb on the vocals, which isn't particularly a problem, but the production as well as dampened the vocals, vocals down. And they're clearly going for a different a sort of sound, a certain sound. It's just not one that works for me. Um for me, it kind of dehumanizes the voice a little bit, which can be effective, but it, it, it creates distance. Like I can't connect with it as, as well mm. as something else. I think from some of the stuff you've given me, that this is from like the 20 teens. That's the kind of period I'm picturing. I, mean, I can understand it though, and it's not a criticism as such. It's just this is a taste thing rather than anything else. Because mm -hmm. I guess. Many people hated like the effect that Casablanca's had on his vocals, particularly the first two Strokes mm -hmm. albums. I loved it. Horses for courses, I accept that. There's nothing right or wrong about it. It's just taste wise, didn't work for me. The vocal melody is actually quite pretty, and I really like the emphasis on certain words, like either that no before it goes into the chorus, and it's really upbeat. And the bass is even more bouncy at this point. Um, and at the chorus, the surfy guitar, I have to call them guitars one and two, surfy guitar has more open chords. Um, we've heard that before in another song recently, but it just works again and it opens it up and it's really nice. After that, as it breaks down to just the main surfy guitar and the vocals, and then it builds back up again, I realised that despite my sort of 
distaste over the, the vocals, which could spoil a song for me. I'm actually liking the music in this song more and more. And there's something kind of nagging away at the back of my head. Which, uh, I'll come on to in a sec. So we get this nice dreamy bit of instrumental with just some faint vocalising. And then as the singing starts again, the second guitar, the Mr. Jangly pick up letter guitar, mm -hmm. um, becomes just a shade more prominent as it's sort of strumming bright chords. And then it goes into a quite a rhythmic strumming pattern. And then it hits me. This is really... Because it was only just registering it was there, now I'm actually hearing it more as a, you know, a major player in the song. This is so 80s indie jangle pop guitar. And once you realise that it's actually, I, I said this in the reaction, I don't mean this in a detrimental way, it's like it's it's half a Johnny Marr, um, you know, <laughs> in a really good way, because his sound is very, very full. And this is about sort of approximate half of it. Once you realise that, the last minute or so of this song, the whole Smith thing clicks into place, like the missing cog. Um, and it becomes an underlay to this track that I didn't even know was there. But this kind of muscle memory in me was going, oh, I like this. I like this. Why am I liking this? And then I just realised. And it also made me wonder. Um, I kind of assumed right from the beginning that this was an American band. But I'm wondering, are they an American band that someone within the band likes the Smiths? Or are they a British band that likes an American sound or whatever? Anyway, I thought it was a good song. The, the vocals, to be honest, did detract from me a little bit. But also, in truth, I did kind of phase them out a bit. So I've got nothing on the words. I would say I enjoyed 90% of this song. And as the song went on, I really enjoyed the, the music of the song more and more and more. And we've all been in that spot with certain vocal styles or certain singers. I won't mm. mention any because you get plenty of hate mail if you've mentioned a certain person. And um, two, who, who you've, come dangerously, <laughs> you've come dangerously close to bringing him up too, by the way, with your, <laughs> the comparisons to some of the other aspects of the song. So. Yes, but I really, really, really liked the music to this. And it was interesting that I went on this little sort of, you know, it didn't like, straight away so it became, I, I actually enjoyed the the insight that popped yeah. into my head three quarters of the way for even more which made it even more enjoyable for me <laughs> and i've been really interested on what else this band have done and what their influences are and where they're from etc etc mm -hmm. et as it mm -hmm. intrigued me yeah they are an intriguing band i've only known about them for a short period of time myself um and it's interesting how they um sort of organically came to I guess like relevance or where they are now. Um, so let me dig into them a little bit here. Okay. The uh, Far Caspian's lo-fi foundations were built in producer and frontman Joel Johnston's University Halls in 2015. His lo-fi sound was picked up by blogs such as Indie Shuffle and the Lazy Lazy Me. So he was just a guy in his college room creating music for shits and giggles that was actually gaining traction on these like you know these blogs and subgenre posts devoted to to new music and seeking it out because he's just putting it up he's just posting it online and so since this, had... this can happen this can yeah. happen yeah and exactly to put, in, to put it in context this is the equivalent of local djs picking up a, a some random single and playing on their airwaves it's just now it could be worldwide instead of yeah just through the greater area of Cincinnati or whatever. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Well, it was like the, cool. one of the first examples of that was the guys over there in from Sheffield, the Arctic Monkeys guys. They got a MySpace yeah. that I don't even think they started, that someone started on their behalf, posted their shit to it. And the next thing you know, they're like, oh my God, like people from all over yeah, like, exactly. the country and the world can hear this. This is crazy. So yeah. So yeah, they guys... scared the crap out of the record labels as well. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> right, right. So since graduating, he is joined. He was joined then by uh, fellow band members Joff Cabello on drums and vocals, Nathan Sayers on lead guitar, and Alessio Scazzaro on bass and vocals. That's a fucking cool name. In late That's twenty, good. yeah, yeah, right, yeah. <laughs> uh, that was in late twenty seventeen when they all formed, um, and once assembled as a full band. Um, they took on this like larger sound and shifted more into this dream popish kind of direction yeah. rather than this lo-fi guy pressing buttons kind of sound 
which shot new life into some of the stuff he had already written and opened new um, sort of avenues for what they could do as a foursome rather than just him, again, pressing things. Um, they were tipped as one of the North's best emerging indie bands of the year. They're from Leeds, by the way. Um, oh. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, by um, the line of best fit uh, with live audiences responding just as positively on the band's first tour with a number of sold out shows and appearances at tastemaker festivals, such as live at Leeds and hit the North. And I should say that these guys are so like new that they don't even have a Wikipedia, like all this information I've had to pull from disparate articles and things like that. There was no lovely one-stop shop. Uh, that kind of led me to everything I needed. So this was a lot of homework went into this one. So <laughs> um, with tracks from their debut EP between days, a new hazy pop, um, a new hazy pop singles, uh, a dream for you and conversations receiving support from radio one, six music and radio X, as well as picking up millions of streams across Spotify and YouTube. The band continues to make waves with their distinctively dreamy yet mellow guitar tones. Um, this uh, particular track, which features, uh, which originally featured on that 2015 EP, which was just him, um, sim and that EP was simply titled Demos, was then, um, and it was self-produced by Johnson, as I alluded to, was then re-released on the band's first full EP um, in 2018, the aforementioned Between Days. And in 2019, they released their second EP as a foursome entitled The Heights. They have since released two full-length albums, Ways to Get On in 2021 and The Last Remaining Light in 2023. We all want someone.org would write uh, of this song. It's rather infectious slice of dream pop that's that moves effortlessly from start to finish. Full of real estate esque jangly guitars and some whimsical vocals that all add up to a winning effect. According to the 405, Far Caspian bridge the, the gap between airy indie pop uh, uh, proclivities and the innermost threads of undiluted indie rock. Their sonic tone is definite, landing somewhere between the styles of tranquil shoegaze and warm dream pop. Clash Music would write of them, Far Caspian looks set to blossom into something very special. Of the specific track Blue, GigGoer.com would write, Flourishing with gorgeous vocal harmonies, though I, I think you like the melody, you just didn't like the voice in general, right? Of the of the vocals. Um, so flourishing with gorgeous vocal harmonies and sun-soaked riffs, lyrically, we are taken on a journey that most have experienced. Blue is a wonderful sonic maze that is just uh right for every day of the week. And now to those lyrics. Last night, the, great, the rain grew dim. I called you up with no answer. It's all a waste of time. I've wanted this forever, but I don't know. It's not the way I thought. I tried to see you, but you'll never know. Oh, it won't ever work, don't you see? You gotta let it hurt. No, it won't ever work, don't you see? You gotta let it hurt. Oh. I think, I think of ways to fly. We smoked away in the basement. I kissed your lips so dry, we danced until we were wasted. Now it's a dream I've made, and all of me has many ways to fly away. Oh, it won't ever work, don't you see? You gotta let it hurt. No, it won't ever work, don't you see? You gotta let it hurt. No, it won't ever work, don't you see? You gotta let it hurt. Oh, oh, you've gotta let it hurt. Oh, oh, you've gotta let it hurt. And I think it's pretty obvious, right? Like the, the track itself is about unrequited love. And being consumed by being uh, close to a person, yet knowing uh, that your feelings are not being reciprocated. So, very universal. I mean, Christ, there's got to be countless songs about this subject matter. But the tones of the guitars and sort of this lovely dream pop indie rock packaging that we've got here really attracted my attention. And I've liked what I've heard from these guys so far and thought, hmm... They are English, but they're just new enough that maybe John hasn't come across these guys yet. So I would give it an effort, and here we are. Yeah, yeah. 
Yeah. Well, it sounds like as well they're evolving um, yeah. as we speak. Um, so next week they could be hair metal. Um, yeah. But, um, <laughs> well, let's let's hope not. <laughs> no, but they are evolving, and these are, I would say my bias on the the is this is the production, the sound of the voice, the way the voice mm. has been put across that I do not like. It's a taste thing, but I would say it also it almost smacks of a lack of confidence as well mm. in his voice. Do you know the way yeah. it's done? It's dampened down and sort of, and I guess the early equivalent of that would be sort of like early REM, yeah, um, with Stipe. But I find that charming. So it's again, it's what you think of what you find at the time. Um, yeah, I'm so sure he'll find that, his he, 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 he'll yeah he'll evolve as well in that side yeah. of it because it sounds like they're coming leaps and bounds from his own bedroom to playing live to sold out crowds i mean jesus that's great, yeah you know? in in pretty short order i mean late 2017 and then by 2023 they've got two full-length albums and two full eps under their belt yeah, yeah. like you said they're touring all over the place yeah. and getting a lot of good press so um yeah thank you uh so much for giving this one a listen guys out there in the listening audience let us know if you're familiar with far caspian um I was kind of pleasantly surprised when they came on my radar. And if they're coming on your radar today, I hope you are as well. Uh, drop some comments down in the comments field. That's what it's there for. We love interacting with you guys and seeing you guys interact with one another. If you're new, uh, look, you don't need to rush to subscribe, but go check out some of our other videos. If you like this, if you like some of them, then please stick around, subscribe. We're trying to grow the channel. We can't do that without you new guys. Um, and we can't um, continue to get great views and shares without all you recurring fans that we see in and out of here all the time. We really do appreciate you all as well. Um, and until next time, hopefully John and I will see all y'all and growing numbers on the next episode of the audio files. See you later guys.